block as we indicated. We have Coach Kirsten Bernthal Booth and we were just talking and uh, <laughs> I told Lizzie, I said, you're probably the most surprised person in the building that you were the player of the game, weren't you Lizzie? She said, yes, I was. <laughs> so, but it was kind of nice to see and we talked about it. She's gotten known as a serving specialist, but she's demonstrated that she can play volleyball. <laughs> well, she tears us up in practice. She's she's crafty. She, you know, she's undersized for a lot of our players at 5'10", but uh, she creates. So she gets a lot of tools in practice, and she's really good at a line shot. The last kill that she got kind of was her bread and butter shot. She'll just kind of tool that outside hand and get that kill. And um, Liz, you know, she's a fifth year. She is such a big contributor to our team. You know, she served as a serving specialist and um, hasn't gotten to do that as much this year. And that's hard, you know. And I think the reason this team has had success and is continuing to have success is because of players like, like Lizzie that have said, you know, maybe I don't have the exact role that I want, um, but I'm, I'm more focused on the team and I'm going to bring a positive attitude to practice every day and, you know, do all those things. And um, I think Lizzie and a couple other players are kind of the heroes of this team. Um, so it was awesome to get her. And, and, you know, you never know subbing some of these players in, Sam and some other players that, that came in, you, you hope that they perform well. And all of them did awesome, which is great because they're doing that in practice. But this is different, you know. So Absolutely. it was great that, that Liz got two. I mean, Liz was perfect on the night. Two kills, a perfect pass. So right. those, those things are great to see. I was telling you, it was a recruiting coup for you. How you got her out of Pebble Beach, California, I'll never know. So, <laughs> but she says she's even going to stay after she graduates. We so are you fortunate. Yes. Yeah, so, again, uh, Providence, a young team, still trying to make its way back. Uh, they, they were scrappy, though. They played well, particularly their libero, I thought, set up very well on uh, Jay Lee. They, they, she kind of robbed her, I think, a, a number of times out there when Jay Lee had a heavy arm on some hits. I think so, and I think Jay likes bigger blocks in front of her so that she can tool. And the block was a little bit smaller, so she was able to hit around the block. And then I thought you're right. They had some defenders that, that really did a nice job getting the ball up. It's, it's funny, I don't know if funny is the word, but Jay Lee, when we were at Providence, had the worst, she hit we like talked below about zero. And then obviously tonight, not, I mean, not a bad, I mean, that's not a bad night, but for Jay Lee, that's not a great night. Um, so, you know, this is a good thing that, that Jay Lee can have an off night in both those matches and we can get out with a sweep. It means other people are stepping up and doing good things. Our numbers look great, other than our service errors. That was really disappointing. When we played Providence, our passing was abysmal, abysmal uh, the first time, and our passing was great tonight. We mentioned that, and that made it easy. And it, it helped, I think, Ashley and Kinsey, who had struggled the last time we had saw them in this kind of setup. They look like they've been doing this for a long time and gave them, as we can see, a lot of options. Yeah, I thought both of them did a great job, and I thought Sam did a great job when she came in. She's been training a lot in the setting position, too. So um, I think the 6-2 is, is really a viable option for us, um, which is great because I think we're going to need that down the, the long haul, and I think the team saw, um, you know, we've got a lot of different offensive weapons, and if we can get in system, we do have the setters that can distribute that effectively. Yeah, we pointed out that going into the third set, just five hitting errors. Uh, you did come up with some hitting errors late, uh, but realistically, and, and most of those were Jay Lee, you had some of these players, well, Jess Bird and Lauren Smith ended the night with no hitting errors, uh, and Marissa got one late uh, there and everything, but everybody, you look at those hitting percentages, four and 500, you'll take those anytime. <laughs> You're right, I will. <laughs> Hit 370 on a night, I will take that, so. But, uh. and then the other point we were making was, uh, you never let you never let uh, Providence get on a run. You don't want to let any team get on a run. But certainly with a side out percentage for the night of 78 percent, they I don't think they ever had more than three points in a row. You know, when we played them the first time, what we didn't do is we didn't allow ourselves to go on runs. I mean, I was watching the tape again this week, and you know we might earn a point or a second point, and then we'd make a service error almost every single time, or they'd get a kill. But one thing that we talked about tonight is. You know, and it wasn't effective. We missed 11 serves, but we did go on some runs, and that's and Jess went on an early run at the very first game. You know, make them earn their point to get out because the you know a team a team like this, the best thing we can do is give them a free point behind the line, and and we did that too much tonight. But we, you know, we had six service aces and took them out of system a lot. But but there's no excuse for missing 11 serves. No, and, and I know you were trying to be aggressive, but some of them really weren't aggressive. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of it just my mistake. 
it was kind of interesting to see somebody like Marissa Wilkinson, who does not serve that much, come up with three aces on the night, though. Marissa's got a, a, fin a fantastic serve, and we've known that. Um, she can be high air. And so that's been the discussion that we've had is that, you know, in what you saw tonight was she might get two aces or take him out of system, get an ace, and then it would end with an air. I think all the times that she came out, it was off an air at the end, or at least almost every time. Now, she scored points every time she went back. So we would take that trade generally, but that's the next step with Marissa. And that was the, the discussion we had with Amanda Foji. Amanda Foji's serve was so great in the past, but she was high air, and that's where she's gotten so much better is that she's low air, and now she's got that aggressive serve. So Marissa could be one of our very best servers on this team if she can, you know, that three ace and then eliminate those three airs next to it. Absolutely. It seems like the blocking is starting to kind of come around, that they're starting to feel more comfortable closing some of the blocks down and coordinating that. And that's tough, particularly when you have a lot of new players up front and with different setters and everything. And then tonight, by playing the 6-2, a little bit easier. You've got all front-line players out there, but still players that had not played with one another still learning to coordinate that block. What I'm seeing with the block a lot the last two weeks is our block numbers are okay but not incredible, but we are getting a lot of blocks. We're just not getting ace blocks. Um, and so trying to, you know, Taryn gets a lot of ace blocks because she really gets over. Um, but trying to, to angle our hands that we're, we're blocking the ball down rather than out, which is becoming a coverable ball. Um, we've spent a lot of time on blocking. I do think we're getting better. Um, but we'll continue to work on it, and hopefully we'll continue to see progress. We talked about your success over the last few years in October, and a lot of that you can attribute to a very tough non-conference part of the schedule. Having these teams ready, whether it be the Missouri Valley or the Big East, ready to play in conference play. I think the numbers were you'd like lost three conference games in four years in October. Uh, it's really a tribute to that non-conference schedule, but what else would you attribute it to? I think it is a, attributed to the maturity of some of these teams that, you know, w again, we try to make sure they understand the ramifications of each game. So, you know, uh, tonight or St. John's this weekend, it, you know, someone might say, oh, you know, they're going to win. Well, no, we're not necessarily going to win. And B, if our team doesn't show up, that loss will hammer us. I mean, a loss tonight, RPI-wise, it's not just a loss in conference. This this would be far worse to lose this match than it would be to Marquette, even though everyone think Marquette the bigger game. Um, but it's hard to get up emotionally every single night, and I see that so often. And I think the last, you know, I, I think these teams have done a nice job of understanding one game at a time. You never look ahead. You try to focus on the match at hand um, because that could be the match that, that trips you up. So I really think it's maturity. And, I mean, I'll say to the seniors, like, you've got to get the, the – younger kids to understand the importance of the game because you get it and and by the time they become juniors and seniors they get the importance of the game so you hope that it's kind of a trickle down speaking of the next game st john's sunday and and they have a lot of international players on that team and they took us to task here a couple of years ago on our home court and i know you still remember that. oh yeah <laughs> i do so but it's still a tough team um they've got one of the best outside hitters in the league I can't pronounce her name. Pella Tacova. Good work. <laughs> um, they have a middle that really ate us up last time we played against them. We watched, spent a lot of time watching St. John's today, so I feel pretty familiar with them. Their setter was injured last week. I have not seen whether she played tonight. They are a different team with her. Um, the backup setter did a good job, but the, the starting setter, you could tell, feels much more comfortable. So, um, you know, so we'll see whether she's back. Um, but they've got, they've got a lot of firepower. They're very physical. Like you said, they're... Uh, an international team primarily, um, and they have consistently generally played well here. So I think, you know, you have teams that either fold here because they're not used to the crowd or they get am amped up and enjoy the crowd. And, and St. John's has been a team that's like the crowd, so we're going to need to be ready to go. And speaking of the crowd, and I know, you know, a lot of people consistently, I mean, let's be honest, you said people would look and, oh, it's Providence. Do I really need to go out and see it? 1,100 people show up tonight on a Friday night to watch the last place team in the league for you to play. There. I, I, I predicted a really small crowd because it was raining mm -hmm. because Doug McDermott is in Lincoln <laughs> and there is a hockey team that is opening a new arena tonight in town. So I thought we'd have seven, 800 people. So mm. the fans coming out tonight is awesome. And I think, you know, I'm so glad they came out and got to see some of the players that they don't get to see. You know, like we've got 
people that know their volleyball. And so when Lizzie Stivers comes in and gets that kill, everyone goes nuts. Like they know right. how hard this kid has worked for five years. So, um, so thrilled with the crowd. I appreciate all the fans coming out. We have the best fans. And, you know, we just want to continue to grow. We want to be filling this place. Congratulations on victory. We'll see you on Sunday. Thank you so much. All right, Kirsten Bernthal Booth with us. Very quickly finish up with those stats of Jays. 41 digs on the night. Kate Elman, uh, Ashley Jansen leading the way with 9-8 for Jaylee Winters. And the Jays, as we mentioned, eight blocks. Four by Wilkinson, four by Cloth, and also um, four by uh, Wilkinson So and Smith. So give you an update on the scores before we say goodnight to Paul right now leading two sets to one uh but villanova in set number four up nine to six st john's the jays opponent on sunday did win tonight three sets to none and then uh, at marquette marquette won the third set in extra points right now leading two sets to one uh, heading into set four number there aaron some final thoughts obviously